So this is a proof of concept for the Diffie Hellman Key Exchange that I'm doing really for myself just to make sure I understand uh, the math behind this really. It's important to note that essentially this computer is doing a key exchange with itself. So there's parts of this where the data is supposed to be private and it's not. There's really no way around that right now. Again, this is just proof of concept stuff. Now before I actually get into the code, um, let me just run it real quick actually. So... Right, um, you see the output here. I'll just leave this up as I talk through code. But before I actually even get into the code, let me just explain something really quick about what's going on here. Um, with uh, cryptography, there's essentially three ways to keep your data confidential. Substitution, transposition, and obfuscation. And, and they can kind of be layered on top of each other if need be to make a, what's known as a super encipherment. However, that's not what we're dealing with here. We're worried more about the keys. All right, so, and there's two ways of dealing with keys. There's symmetric encryption, which is the traditional type of encryption, and that's what we're doing here. And then there's asymmetric. So what's the difference? Well, symmetric encryption is where you use one key to both encrypt and decrypt the data. Whereas with asymmetric encryption, you're using two separate keys. You're using one key to encrypt the data and then a separate different key to decrypt the data. Now we're going to focus on symmetric encryption here because this is what the, the Diffie-Hellman key exchange is all about. So one of the big vulnerabilities with symmetric encryption is the, uh, the transport process of the key itself. So if I wanted to send you an encrypted message, in order for you to be able to decrypt it, I also have to, to tell you the key. Now I could literally tell you, I could whisper it to you, or I could write it you know, on a letter and mail it to you. Uh, there's all kinds of ways you could do this. However, regardless of how you do it, the process of getting the key to you leaves it open to interception and so some three very smart people figured out a way to get around this using uh, one-way functions and so that's essentially what's going on here so let's go ahead and get into the code before i get too off topic uh, so the first thing we're doing is we're creating two values here y and p um, and these are public values these would be transmitted from one client to another and right now they're being set to a random integer between two and nine thousand, or excuse me, ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. And I see a slight bug here. That I should actually make this three. I'm not going to get into the details of why that should be. Anyway, um, th again, these are public uh, values that anybody listening in on the conversation would be able to capture that data. All right now, the my x value and the his x values these would be private. I would know my x value, which is some random integer between two and nine hundred ninety-nine but I would not know his X value, okay? and we would not share these values either. Now, this next, uh, so this loop here, um, it's only really only gonna run if the Y value is greater than P, because in order for this uh, to work, the Y needs to be less than P. And uh, I should really set this upper limit to whatever the X value is, that way it only has to run once. But again, minor little, details anyway uh, let's get into print statements here so now what you're seeing here so the shared y so I'm, I'm seeing here just so I make sure this is working right the y is 532 the P is 74400 and yes the y is less than P so we're good there now my X is 251 and then he chose for his X to be 138 and that's fine now I wouldn't know what his X is if this was really happening between two computers all right so now we're going to get into the next part which is now i solve the equation which is um y to the x mod p which looks like this um to the computer so what i'm doing here is so my answer is equal to our shared value of y to the power of my private x modulus division our shared value of p which i get four seven six eight when he does it, he takes, again, the shared value of y to the power of his private x, modulus division, the shared value of p. And he gets a different answer, which is uh, 10, or 1,024. Notice the answers are different, but these are also public. I would transmit to him my answer, and he would tell me his answer. All right, now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes here. This is where it gets interesting. So now my key here is set to his answer, which is 1,024 to the power of my private x, modulus division r, shared value for p. Now you can ignore these two lines about, I'm doing some binary stuff, I got ahead of myself a little bit. Anyway, um, I print out my key. So my key in decimal form is 1024. And then 
his key is going to be my answer raised to his private x, modulus division r shared value of p, and we printed out his key here. And so his key in decimal form is 1024 as well. Now the, the fact that his answer here and his key are the same, that's just uh, luck of the draw, I guess. Um, in fact, I'll, uh, I'll run this again and see now you get a different result. But no matter how many times you run this, you're always going to get the same final key. And this is, this is the, really the meat and potatoes here because um, when, when this key exchange is happening, these two values are sent. These two values are sent. The only value that isn't sent over the net is our, our private x values. But we are able to always arrive at the same final answer and we don't have to transmit to these other we can rest assured that as long as all this data here was sent correctly we're going to arrive at the same answer in the end and somebody intercepting this wouldn't be able to figure out what our key was